Hello, and welcome to Not Just Books, the monthly television show about your Williamson County Library and the community here. I'm Dolores Greenwald, the director of the library. Today, we will have the honor of meeting the Williamson County Public Library's Janice Keck Literary Award winners. This is an awesome group of folks, and believe me, you'll want to get to know them. Because we have four contest winners, we're doing things a bit different for the show. We will not have the Your World or Save the Date segments in this program. Instead, we're going to be interviewing the winners separately, and the whole program will be What's Hot in Books. Thank you for joining us today. We have a busy show, so let's get to it. We'll be right back with our What's Hot in Books segment. Come on out to this year's Williamson County Fair, August 1st through the 9th, to celebrate our 10th anniversary. There will be plenty of activities, including pageants, 4-H events, performances by Sean Clush and Cody Ray Slaughter, the return of Grand Old Country Night, and much more. Tickets for adults are $6, tickets for children ages 6 through 12 are $3, and anyone under the age of 6 gets in for free. Make sure you come out to this year's Williamson County Fair. This is an experience you don't want to miss. Hello and welcome back. I am privileged to have Brad Hoover, our Janice Keck Award winner for nonfiction for his book, Tears of Hope, Hero in a Bandana. And uh, Brad is from Franklin and he is also an emergency room physician and father to Liam who passed away at age 12 in 2005. Thanks for joining us today. Thank you. Glad to be here. And um, tell us a little bit about Liam. Well, Liam was a uh, uh, darling of a child adopted to us right from birth in 1993. And our oldest, he was a special boy, uh, loved life, loved living. And uh, unfortunately, he came down with a brain tumor at age 11 and thus began our journey. And Tell us a little bit about that. Tears of Hope, Hero in a Bandana. Where did you get the inspiration to journal during this process? Well, it wasn't uh, anything that really was planned. Uh, going through uh, every parent's worst nightmare is something that nobody can plan for. But I found that journaling and sending out updates to friends and family was, was healing for me, it allowed me to release, and then I started getting some feedback that, hey, this is, this is pretty gripping, and uh, we appreciate what you're doing. You need to hang on to these uh, emails and, and maybe do something with it at some point. I never dreamed I would do that. I was just doing it for myself and <laughs> uh -huh. journaling, and this was before the day of Facebook, and actually before the day of Bridge. I just sent these out to friends and family, and, and I did hang on to them, and here we are today. Well, good. Um, you are an ER physician. Tell us about how your background and your career impacted what was going on during this time. Well, I had a, I have a special, um, you know, advantage, I guess, being on the medical side of the house. And with that, I'm also a, a pretty large skeptic of medical care. And, you know, I analyze, you know, things and I, I was just overwhelmed actually from, from being on the patient side of the of the bed rail. I've never done that before and uh, something that uh, the experience was uh, was gripping and, and enlightening at the same time. Mm -hmm. uh, I, it actually has helped me be a better physician to my patients. You know even today I can understand more about being on uh, an anxious parent uh, watching you know, your uh, son uh, suffer and, and you know, experiencing the joys and the thrills and the despair of, uh, of a medical condition. Was it hard as a physician to step back and let other folks make decisions on the health care? Well, I was initially worried that I would be uh, have a difficult time doing that, but however, after being uh, overwhelmed really and so impressed with the medical care afforded uh, Liam through St. Jude and Vanderbilt it wasn't hard at all to step back. I trusted uh, the physicians and the staff there still do mm -hmm. and have become their biggest fan. Oh that's <laughs> that's excellent. Um, what do you want 
the reader to take away from this, from your book? Well, the way I look at it is, I'm just a vessel really for the raw emotion that you know any parent would feel from any medical condition that their child is going through, you know, be it cancer, you know, muscular dystrophy, multiple sclerosis, you name it. There's so many conditions out there, so many challenges for parents with, uh, with, with medical conditions. And I'm just a vessel for that emotion to, to journal and, and if I can you know, assist one parent, uh, one family with, uh, with, with my writing and, and just to show them how we made it through, then I, I would find that a success. Well, that leads to my next question. Are you still writing? And what are you working on? Well, no, I haven't found anything uh, since that, that has captured my attention, with the exception of some of the stories from the ER. Now, I, I do have some stories I have collected in my brain, at oh, least. Oh, I can imagine. <laughs> <laughs> However, you know, that has been done a couple of times. There's TV shows, you know, mm -hmm. the show ER, for example. Mm -hmm. But maybe one day I'll put my stories together, because I do have some, uh, some doozies. <laughs> now, how long have you been a, an ER physician? I am entering my 25th year this wow. year from from uh, from internship, so I've been doing it a long time. Because oftentimes physicians start in the ER for a while and then they go on and do other things. That's correct. A lot of a lot of doctors have emergency room experience, and not not a whole lot of us stick with it because it is draining and it is emotional. And I do see cancer and heartbreak almost on a daily basis, but mm -hmm. I also see you know, things that where I do make a difference and can, can make someone feel a little bit better uh, when they come to see us. Well, thank you so much, and thank you for your book, and congratulations on the award. And we, uh, we hope that you do put together either some ER stories or something else. Well, thank you. I'm honored and humbled to, to accept the uh, award and, and look forward to it. Thank you, right. and we'll be right back. Did you know the library has streaming independent films? We do. Netflix is a streaming movie service that provides unlimited access to award-winning shorts, feature films, and documentaries. With thousands of films to choose from across more than 50 countries, Netflix offers a viewing experience you can't get anywhere else. Film festival hits also from major film festivals all over the world including Sundance, Cannes, Tribeca, and more. Find the right film for you. You can sort by language, genre, or film length with easy-to-use filters. Support filmmakers. Viewing films on IndieFlix directly supports the filmmakers who made them. And it can, they're available anywhere. Watch movies on any internet-enabled computer, smartphone, or tablet with a web browser. Also available on Roku, Xbox, and Apple TV via Apple devices. Where can I find out about the Venus fly trap? Where can I research information on my business competitors? What is the safety record on the car I want? Where can I research careers? Where? where? I'm all shook up. The Tennessee Electronic Library. That's where. And it's free to everyone in our state. Now go to your public library and, and find out how you can log on and, and get your password to a world of information just for living in our state. You can probably even figure out the password just by listening to my voice. Hi, and welcome back. I would like for you to meet Sandy Coomer. She is our Janice Keck Literary Award winner for poetry, and her book is called The Presence of Absence. Uh, Sandy was born and raised in Nashville, She's lived in Brentwood since 97. She's got a background in science, especially microbiology and immunology. But she's all, always been a creative writer, and also she is an athlete. So we're going to talk a little bit about that, too, today. Thank you for coming today, and welcome. Thank you. I'm so honored to be here. Thank you so much. Tell us a little bit about your mix of science and writing. Um, well, my mother tells me that um, I wrote my first poem at age five. <laughs> Um, so I've always been interested in words and putting words together. But when I took science classes in high school and college, I was fascinated with our humanness and the magic and mystery of that 
um, not only on the level of organism, but in a deeper level of cellular and even the atomic level. Mm -hmm. um, so I knew that's what I wanted my career to be in. That's, that's terrific. That's terrific to know that young where you want to go. Uh, tell us a little bit about the writer's loft. Um, when I decided I wanted to focus on writing, um, I knew that I had a uh, kind of a deficit in my, in my knowledge on the craft of writing. So I needed to find a program that could teach me some things. And the Writer's Loft is out of uh, Middle Tennessee State University, nearby in Murfreesboro. Um, and that is a creative writing program, certificate program, mm -hmm. that pairs writers with mentors oh. um, over the uh, course of three semesters and you learn what you need to learn um, pretty much one-on-one -on -one with, that, with that specific person in your chosen field. That sounds terrific. It's, it's a wonderful Very program. Helpful. Very helpful. Um, now, I've, I saw in your bio the term chapbook. What is that? A chapbook, if you think chapter, mm -hmm. um, it is a common way for poets to break into publishing their first book. Oh. It's a small volume of poetry, mm -hmm. typically 20 or so poems, um, that introduces your poetry to the world. Um, so I got a poetry chapbook published um, from Finishing Line Press, uh, which is a small press out of Kentucky, in 2012, and the name, name of that book is Continuum. That's that's very good. Is it still available for purchase? It is through that publisher. Okay. Yes, it is. Um, also, not in addition to the science and the writing, you're also a mixed media artist as well. I, Tell us I a little am. bit about that too. That has that's a, a fairly new endeavor for me within the last year. Um, I love making things. I love creating things, not just with words, mm -hmm. but you know, with paint and um, watercolor and ink. Um, the form of mixed media involves so many different things that you can build your artistic picture with. Um, I use torn paper, um, beads, fiber, metallic embellishments. So what kind of things have you made out of paper, for example? It's all on a canvas. It's, you glue it all on the canvas. Okay. Um, and my art is inspirational, encouragement based. It always has words as part of it, oh, um, and drawing excellent. into my poetry. Excellent. That's terrific. Boy, I can't keep up with you. Not only are you <laughs> all these other things, but you're also an athlete, too. Tell us about some of the um, endurance challenges you've done. I have been a runner for, a long distance runner for many years. Um, but recently, I got bitten by the bug of triathlon, triathlon, <laughs> um, which is a race of three different um, disciplines, swimming, biking, and running. Um, so I've been doing that for three years. Uh, I signed up to do Ironman Chattanooga, which is the oh. full distance, longest uh, wow. Ironman uh, triathlon um, that's going to be in September. Wow. So that's what I'm training for. And all my races that I'm doing up until till then are in preparation for the big Ironman race. Now, how long do you train for that, uh, a race such as the one in Chattanooga? Uh, six to nine months. Wow. I've been training since January. Wow. And what is part of that regiment? It's a lot of swimming, biking, and running. <laughs> <laughs> but it, it also is weights and yoga. Um, nutrition is also a very big part of it. Well, excellent. Well, you'll have to come back and talk to us about that when you get I would love to. done after September. <laughs> um, thank you so much for joining us today. It was a privilege to have you here and to meet you. Man, thank you. you've, just given, you've just energized me to do <laughs> other things. Thank you so much, and we'll be right back. Welcome back. I am pleased to have Jean Simmons here, our Janice Keck Award winner in children's literature for Willie the Panther Cat. Jean lives in Franklin 
And she does have a cat named Willie. She was a nurse for 25 years and uh, an Air Force officer. She earned a master's degree from Vandy, and she left nursing to pursue other projects, including her first book, which was Willie the Panther Cat. Thank you so much for joining us today. Thank you. Um, and you, how long have you lived in Franklin? I've been here, I've been lived in Nashville all my life, but I've been in Franklin the last couple of years, and I love it. And love it. tell us about your Air Force experience. Well, that was a long time ago. I was an active duty uh, Air Force nurse before the Iraq conflict, okay. and it was a long time ago. But I was in for about six years and really loved it, learned a lot in the Air Force. It was a great experience for me. Uh, I would think it's a different kind of nursing than you would have <laughs> <laughs> yes, <it is. laughs> under normal circumstances. It was very different, and uh, basically they, they kind of own you for the years you're in, but it was a great experience. But it worked all kinds of hours, and it was very exciting, and I enjoyed it a great deal. Was that part of the thing, what the most interesting part was the momentum? Definitely the momentum and, and the chance to serve and uh, to to serve something greater and the, for general purpose was a, was a really wonderful part of it and the experience that I got was just tremendous, couldn't match it. Well, Willie the Panther Cat, let's talk <laughs> about that. What was your motivation? Well, it was my son, Ryan, who it's about a boy and his cat and then I actually have a cat named Willie, as you said, and uh, we are both animal lovers, big animal lovers, and I really believe strongly in um, adopting strays and rescue animals and uh, that there's just not enough homes for all of them. And I thought this would be a great idea if I write a children's book and write it about an animal that we adopted as a stray and gave a home to and how much he's brought to our lives. Uh, and that's what I tried to do with the book, as well as to, to show Ryan and how much he loves animals and his special rapport with Willie mm -hmm. and other animals. Well, and you adopted Willie from where? Well, he was actually a stray. In he the was book, a stray. Okay. In the book, I have him adopted from an animal shelter. But he was actually a stray that we found. His mom had a litter, and we adopted all the other kittens out. And we took Willie, and then we found a home for the mom and had her um, spayed. Uh, and then that's where Willie came about. And then we also have a stray dog that we've adopted. So. <laughs> We've got a full family. <laughs> <laughs> well, you also, in, in your spare time, uh, volunteer at the Williamson County Animal Control Center. I try to. I, I like to go over there and um, visit with the cats. You can't, of course, you don't take them for a walk. And then I take the dogs out and take them for a walk and socialize and play with them because they're in a kennel all day mm -hmm. long. And it's really important to have people to go by and, and, and play with them and, and love on them. And, that's what I do when I go to the shelter. And I'm going to start taking my son someday. Oh, that's someday. good. And now, how old is your son now? He just turned 11. Okay. But I'm afraid he'll want to adopt all the animals. <laughs> <laughs> well, I know, and it, it seems to go in cycles where, you know, the center might have a lot of cats, mm -hmm. and then they have more dogs than they have cats. So it just seems to go, for some reason, it goes in cycles. It does seem to. They seem like they're always full, unfortunately. but. They do a wonderful job. They do. They're, they're amazing. They're very clean. They're very loving. They take good care of their animals. And they do a lot of publicity and, and uh, adoption events. And they really try to get all the animals a good home. And yeah, that's we have important. adoption events at our main library in Franklin. I saw that. <laughs> so, yeah, they're out, they're out there a lot. Um, Willie the Panther Cat is, is a great book. Do you have another project you're working on or one that you're going to start working on? Well, I was thinking about doing another book about Willie, so one possibility, my, but my son wants me to write a book about our dog. Ah. <laughs> Give him equal time, so it's between those two, either about a cat or a dog, I have to decide. But you're, you enjoy writing children's more than any other type of writing? Well, yes, I just started writing last year, actually. But all, over the years of being read to and reading to my son, I've, I've always thought I'd love to try a children's book. Well, I, and it's so important. Children's it is. books are important. You catch that love of reading when they're young. <laughs> you know, we, be, we believe in that a lot. Um, so what, um, what's the dog's name? What's your dog's name? His name is, her, I'm sorry, her name is Roxy. Roxy. And she's a part German Shepherd and I don't know what else that we adopted. And she's very loving. Uh, now, course, was she a stray? Or she was a stray. Someone dumped her on the side of the road, and we adopted her. Um, and, of course, 
she and Willie don't always get along so well, but <laughs> but you know they they have a kind of a truce now, so they uh, they do okay. <laughs> Willie was first, and he knows it. <laughs> well, that might be a good book, too, Getting Along. Willie that's, and... <laughs> a, that's a good idea. I'll have to do that. <laughs> well, thank you so much for joining us today. Well, thank you. We, we appreciate you being here, and again, congratulations. Thank you, and we'll be right back. And welcome back. We have John Davis with us today, our Janice Keck Award winner for fiction, and his book is called Bear Shadow. He was raised in Chesterfield in West Tennessee, described as a non, almost non-existent town, so I want to find out about that. But most of his working career has spent in land acquisitions for various federal agencies. And also, he has a most recent novel, Bear Shadow, is a quasi-prequel to his 2012 publication, The Sixth, Weekum, the Sixth William. So thank you very much for joining us today, and thank you, John, for being here with us today. Well, thank you very much for the opportunity of being here. Um, this is a special award because you were friends with the, the name of the, uh, of the award, Janice Keck. So tell us a little bit about that. Well. Janice came here in 1979 and became uh, director of the library, and I met her soon after that. I did some directing for the Pool Type Theater, for the, oh, the, yes. for the, and so her daughter Julia was in that, and so I uh, uh, was in a show with Julia and then directed a show that she was in, and then Janice did props backstage, and she was one of these really, really energetic people, mm -hmm. and, and we so we, we developed uh, a, a, a good association. Well, tell us a little bit about Chesterfield, Tennessee, <laughs> the well, almost non-existent town. <laughs> well, it's almost more non-existent now than, than, it, than, it, than it used to be. We used to have a blacksmith shop, and we had a grist mill, and a post office, and a couple of stores, and now we've dwindled down to, uh, to just one store now. But it's a kind of a place that subconsciously, when you're a writer, lives in your mind. And the people, the old men that hung around the store and swapped knives and swapped lies. <laughs> and subconsciously, to a writer, those kind of people sit back in your mind just waiting for a chance to come out. Mm -hmm. Now, where is it exactly? Is the, if you took a straight edge and drew a line from Memphis to Nashville, exactly halfway along oh, that, okay. you'd, you'd, find, you'd find Chesterfield. Now, you write about Australia. Um, what is your connection to Australia? Well, I've traveled in Australia some, and Australia is a fascinating place. If you have uh, seen the harbor at Sydney, it's one of those things that stays in your mind. If you've seen Ayers Rock, where as the sun moves across and it of course, Ayers Rock looks like a molten loaf of bread, mm -hmm. but it's huge, and as the sun travels across it, uh, the shadows are constantly changing. So it's something you could really sit all day and just look at. And then, of course, everybody uh, has seen the Crocodile Dundee movies, mm -hmm. uh, uh, and uh, Rabbit Proof Fence, uh, even some of the Mad Max, Mad, Mad Max movies that are mm -hmm. shot there. So there's something ab about the outback and the vastness of it and the dryness of it that, uh, th that, that kind of stays with you. Well, tell us a little bit about Bear Shadow. Well, Bear Shadow does start uh, in Australia. Uh, of course, all books have to start somewhere. And so I thought that was a nice place to start it. And it starts with a young man whose father uh, is of questionable character at the very best. One of the things he is, he's a horse thief. 
And so they leave Australia on a sailing vessel and come to the United States. And they reach the East Coast and kind of work their way uh, toward Tennessee, uh, stealing horses and doing various other things. And so, but the young boy wants a home. He wants, and he wants something different from what his father has. And so they settle. Now, on, how old is the boy when they he's make this? A, he's about twelve when, okay. when he when he gets never been to school. Okay. A bright kid, but never been to school. Okay. But but he wants stability in his life, and he wants to settle down. And so they do in this little community named Shoals that really doesn't exist except in my mind. <laughs> and at there he is taken in by a family. Uh, there are some circumstances, and he, he winds up a genuine orphan at this point. So he's taken in by a family that's comprised of a retired federal judge and his wife. She is a Melungeon. Now, yes, what is that? Uh, Melungeons are, are, are a fascinating group of people. They're primarily up in East Tennessee and in the Virginians, in the Virginia. They, they are usually dark-complected. Mm -hmm. uh, they have dark hair. Uh, and they were kind of set aside because the white man, when he came in and started taking over the land, they weren't Indians and they weren't black. Mm -hmm. And so the white man did not know how to deal with them. So as a result, the Melungeons with, kind of withdrew, became very clannish, mm -hmm. withdrew back into the mountains. Mm -hmm. and, and today they're pretty much a part of the population. But during the period of this book in the uh, late 1800s and early 1900s, they were still um, a, a group that was very little known about. Well, did, do, do the judge and his wife give the boy stability for they a while? They do give him stability and they give him guidance. The, the judge was a, a, very, a very kind man, a very stern man, but a very kind man. Did, did a lot of work uh, after he retired. Uh, he did a lot of, of, of free gratis work for, mm -hmm. for people. <clears throat> His wife, Lenora, she had a, a, a very strange background the way she was raised. She was raised uh, in a place of, of where she was ostracized for being there. And she had a, uh, today she would have been a, a person that would have been marching for civil rights mm -hmm. for, for people. <laughs> but anyway, they give him, they give him stability and she teaches him. She finds out he has a very good mind. Mm -hmm. And so, and so they become his, his mentor. And in a way he replaces, uh, he, he replaces a son that they had that had disappeared in, uh, in very mysterious circumstances. So they both needed each other. They needed each other. They, they need, she needed someone to teach mm -hmm. and he needed someone to teach him. Oh, that's great. And the judge needed someone to watch over. That's great. That's great. Well, thank you so much. Your book is amazing. The selection committee loved it. And uh, congratulations. Well, uh, thank you very much. And uh, I'm so glad that, that Janice's name is associated with the reward makes it doubly nice. It does, it does. We'll be right back. Welcome back. Thank you so much for joining us today. I hope you like the show and we'll watch again next month. I'd like to thank my special guest, the Williamson County Library's Janice Keck Literary Award winners, John Davis, Gene Simmons, Brad Hoover, and Sandy Coomer. If you have any comments or suggestions for future programs, please contact me. The email address is notjustbooks at williamson-tn.org. We're doing some exciting things here in Williamson County and you'll not want to miss it. Also, remember our summer reading program which is going on now. Enroll and win a prize. More information is on our website at wcpltn.org. You can also leave comments about the show. Until next time, explore your world and read.